The most common issue, impairment, whatever you want to call it, that I see in distance runners is overstepping and overstriding. And the reason I say both, overstepping and overstriding is, um, overstriding is actually a misnomer, right? A stride is from your right foot to when your right foot hits the ground again. A step is when you, right, stepping with the, the right foot and then the left foot, right? This is the distance that we're looking at to, to saying, hey, this is, this is too long, right? This is not what we want. Um, so when we're overstepping and overstriding, really overstepping, uh, what's happening is we are taking a step, we're too far out in front of the other leg, right? Too far out in front of our center of mass. And for instance, if you see the, uh, the, the pictures of whether it's Running World or Nike, that is notorious for this, I'm calling out Nike, they have pictures of people running and they're like this, right? The heel is on the ground and they're like, hey, this is awesome, right? And then I'm like, dude, look how far out in front of your body you are. Look how much of a heel strike you have. This is atrocious running form. And we need to understand that this is not good. Right? It's not what we want to be doing. So what's, what's going to happen when we overstep and overstrike? Why is it so bad? Why am, I, why am I talking about it? Why am I so heated about this? Is Because if you overstep and overstride, what's going to happen is um, because you're landing too out in front of your body, it can cause a host of other things to occur. What I mean by this is if I'm landing, instead of landing maybe here underneath my body or closer to my body, if I'm landing maybe here, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna spend more time on the ground, I have more time to collapse, and this is, has implications on, well, who cares about collapsing? I do, <laughs> you should as well, because this is, can cause a hip drop, excessive hip drop, knee caving in, or we call this knee valgus in the physiotherapy world, but also, this, oh, this pronation that we, everybody talks about, this over pronation, I'll take my shoes off so you can see, of the foot where instead of here now, all of a sudden, uh-oh, we're much more pronated because we took too long of a step, too far of a step, and we're spending way too much time on the ground. So this is just one implication. Another one is, if we're, if we're not getting our leg behind us, if our hips are a little bit tight, this might actually cause some overstepping. And so think about this pendulum effect that might occur. So if I'm unable to get my leg behind me, I'm gonna compensate and just step farther out in front. So this is a huge cause and why I probably, we probably see overstepping and striding so often is our hips are a little bit tight. So imagine a pendulum is swinging from your hips. And if you can't get that pendulum back, what's gonna happen is instead of getting back and forth and back and forth relatively equally, it's gonna go, okay, I can't go back. So I'm just gonna swing forwards more. It's gonna be more of this instead of this. So basically, instead of this pendulum effect here, it now becomes this, which not only are you gonna overstep and overstride, but you will probably also add some vertical oscillation. So now you're actually doing two things wrong. You're overstepping and striding, landing way too out in front of your body, and you're also oscillating too much. You're bouncing too much, and this is gonna cause excessive stress and strain um, on really your muscles, your joints, and your bones, and overstriding in this oscillating force is a huge cause of probably most stress fractures, uh, a lot of shin splints, uh, just a lot of knee pain as well. So there's so many things that we can avoid. We can have more, we can have improved longevity as runners if we can just improve our running form and not overstep and overstride. And really, if I see a runner and they are collapsing, bouncing, and they have all these things going on and they're overstriding, the first thing that we have to do is look at the overstepping and overstriding and say, hey, let's address this first and see what happens to everything else. It is that big of an issue where many times, in many cases that I've had and other practitioners that I've talked to, we have, all we've done is said, hey, we just addressed the overstepping. Sometimes it's that quick. There might be some other things as well. Of maybe, maybe your hips are tight and that's why you're overstepping. But if we can address this overstepping and maybe release the hips or whatever we have to do and train running, right? We're not just training to run a marathon. We have to train ourselves to be able to run. If we can just do this many times, it's a very quick fix and we can fix it. We can really just have a much nicer time running, less aches and pains and have a longer running career.